What's good, y'all? Welcome to another episode of the Gen TV Podcast. As always, your boy Ease. Hey, hey, when the sauce guy. Sorry if our energy is a little low today. We are still recovering from the music festival yeah, that we just um, attended. We're not so, young anymore, man. Like our are, bodies are definitely we, telling us we need to slow down. Uh, we are not young, but so this this is pretty much gonna be um, the Made in America kind of review. What we thought. So this was my second time there. This was your first. My first, yeah. So that was your first music festival overall, right? Yeah, overall, yeah. So. Made in America 2022, man. What did you think? Overall, like it was a good experience. I think that the lineup could have been much better. I think um, the artists that they had were like okay, but there weren't people that were like you know on my radar, people that I would typically listen to. So like I wasn't really too excited to see them, other than my guy Burner Boy. You know he came through, he came and saved the day overall. But um, I think the lineup could have been. We could have had a better lineup this year um from my understanding you know previous years had a decent a decent lineup now i don't know if it would have been like to the same caliber you know like you know money bag yo or meg the stallion like if they were the money bag yo or the meg the stallion like at that when time I, you know? when i had gone my first time it was like a couple years ago i just remember i saw meg the stallion the baby and roddy rich like right before they really blew up right and now obviously like they're like you know, headliners type shit, so they're yeah. not going to be doing a small state. But, I mean, my guy Jaleel, that nigga fucking held the shit you down. You fucking Jaleel? I ain't fucking, I ain't fucking around with this nigga, bro. He yeah, got Jaleel, it. Yeah, Jaleel, he was impressive, bro. That's yeah. like, that's a performance. Like, my man, yo, his, he's got the strongest knees I've ever seen. You know, like, they talk about Meg the Stallion's knees being strong. Like, that dude did it. <laughs> yo, that backflip was like 15. Yeah, what, we saw like, that shit fucking live. live like, yeah. The nigga, that like, shit y'all was... haven't seen that shit on TikTok. Like, we... <laughs> It is, if, it, if it looks cool on TikTok, imagine seeing that in person. Because, yo, he's no lie was like 15, 20 feet up. Like, yo, I, I thought fuck. he was going to bust his ass. <laughs> high as fuck. That nigga has crazy energy. And the songs are definitely catchy, you know? Like, yo, he sounds like more of an upbeat Juice World to me. Like, right. his music has less the same depressing. sound, right. but not, like, the same, like, I, I kind of want to die type right. of vibe, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, nah, I fuck with it, you know? And his fucking supernatural arms that he got his long ass fucking arms and bro, shit bro that is got to be the most like solid um <coughs> rapper like i've ever seen like like his like Paul, like no homo his shit yeah. like he diesel like he is body <laughs> he is body goals bro. right that nigga like fucking works out and raps and that's it like that's all he does nothing else nothing more no, but i fuck with his music you know the moment we walked in um he was, was on the stage that was the first guy we saw yeah the first guy we saw he was on stage and Honestly, the music just attracted us, and yeah. I stayed around, and I'm like, yo, I actually kind of fuck with this guy. Like, the energy that he gave the crowd, like, you know, was, I don't even know if the crowd knew his music, but it really seemed like they were fucking with him hard, you know? So. Yo, he, yo, he has the kind of vibe that even if you don't know his music, like, you'll just vibe with it anyway because the energy's so good coming from him. Like, yo, yeah, he, yeah. he's a performer, you know what I mean? And it's ironic as fuck is that, like, I think later that day, I ended up seeing, like, a, a, a TikTok from him. I think the next day, I ended up yeah, seeing yeah, him on viral. TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the flip. The, the flip that he did. But, I mean, overall, it was a good festival, you know? Like, I think, you know, I'll definitely go back again, 100%. I was really kind of bummed out about um, Kodak not making it. Two big headliners were supposed to show up. Not headliners, but two big artists were supposed to show up, Kodak and Klee Glock, Klee, Key, Glock. Key Glock. And neither one of them showed up. Almost back-to-back, kind of. No, they were back-to-back. Yeah. Yo, I think we saw, we were supposed <laughs> to go watch Kodak first. Uh, no, Key Glock first. Key Glock yeah. first. It was Key Glock first. And then they put in the screen that, like, um, due to, like, travel, travel delays, yeah. he can't make it. And he had the big screen, the big stage, the big which stage, was surprising bro. to me. <laughs> yeah. Yo, like, Key Glock's, like, a, a good rapper, but you know what's, like, I think what's kind of fucked up to me is, like, that he would have a bigger stage than Burner Boy. We talked about this. I feel like it's really because of just timing, you know? I think Burner Boy... And Bad Bunny were the biggest names, so they saved them for last. And I don't think they're gonna put Burner Boy and Bad Bunny on the same stage. I think they wanted them to literally be the last two um people play. You know? I got it. I just I, I still think it's just disrespectful to Burner Boy, bro. Like he is one of the biggest artists in like the world. You know what I mean? I mean but and he about- just you know, he just won like a Grammy last year or something like that. Like, right. Or the year before for his last album. Well, think about it. Like if he had. 
if he had if they had played one of them earlier on, most of the people would have left. They probably wouldn't even watch anyone else. You know, like not nah, everybody so, was staying for Bad Bunny. Like I mean, if they, one of the two of them, you yeah. know, if one of the two of them. I mean, to be honest with you, if I wasn't, if it was at my first music festival and I had came with like my girl or something. I wouldn't have went back for Bad Bunny, but because I was already there. So you like, wouldn't have gone back for Bad Bunny? Nah. It's, I, I mean, I like Bad I fuck, Bunny's I fuck music. I Bad Bunny, bro. But I, I don't understand Spanish. So, like, you know, I'm not going to go back there for Bad I don't Bunny. I don't understand most rap. <laughs> and I still fuck with it. Nah, I've been, I guess, you know? I, I would say over the last couple of months, I've really been into Bad Bunny. Yeah. And I don't understand it, but, like, it just. It speaks to me like his, his music <laughs> definitely a vibe. I mean, I fuck with it, you know. I, he's definitely. I'm not trying to knock. I mean, yo, people it were like off. stampeding to go back Bro, to Bad Bunny. They, this guy had people in a trance. Yo, you man. know what? I, didn't, I actually didn't see at the show because mm-hmm. like, we might have left at that point. You know, someone who ran on stage. Really? Some girl ran on stage. Um, over there, I saw like um. I mean, TikTok a couple. You said we ago. left at that point. Like we left early. We literally left yo, like can we, so. Yo, can fucking... we give? Can we give up the Bad Bunny? Like this, my man is a, <laughs> it's performer. a performer. Like yo, bro. he went above and beyond. Like this nigga did a yo, line, did a perk or some shit before he, he got have, on that stage. He must have went over like at least an hour over what he's bro, supposed to do. We like, were supposed at least an hour over. Okay, because we were yeah we were definitely there for usually the acts are not the acts but the performers are there for like an hour or so. We were there for like an hour and a half, and he's still going. And it's not like he's hitting like bullshit mid songs. Like no, it's like hits. Yeah, he's like hits. even I don't fuck with like I don't listen to Spanish music, but like I know these songs that he's playing back to back to back. And it's like you know after a certain amount of time, you know it's just like all right, all right. Time, time to go. Yeah, it's like all right for it's like, me. Yeah, it's time. Yeah, but um, you know I remember walking back, like walking to like leave. And we're thinking, okay, he's done. And then he goes Starting. right, go right back into it like another song. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, if those people that came to see Bad Money, they really got their money's worth. Like he made the entire fucking weekend for them. Yeah. I mean, so let's go um day by day. So yeah. the first day, it was that was the day there was the two cancellations. Yep. Yeah. But we got to see Don Tolliver. Don Tolliver, I, th- I think he did his. Thing. That was the second day. What Don Tolliver's second day? Yeah. Okay. Don Tyler was the second day. Was right Lil Uzi Vert the first day? Lil Uzi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Lil Uzi. I was smack. I was smack at that time. I already know what you're about to say. <laughs> Lil Uzi. Lil Uzi Vert was the, was the first day. I mean, I'm laughing because. I know. <laughs> we're like 20 minutes into the show at this point. This guy looks back to me. He's yeah. like, bro, I don't think he's coming. And I'm like, he been on. what the fuck you mean? He's like, who's not coming? I was like, he's like, Lil Uzi. I don't think he's coming. I'm like, Bro, the nigga's been on stage for like twenty minutes at this point, yeah, to the I point was, where a stranger had to I look was, over and be like, yeah. "Like he's up, he's up there right now." I was smiling. I was smiling. And like, I tell yeah. you, I don't know why, but at that time, that was the funniest thing to me. Like yo, I, but was I was like, cramped. yo, because we already had like the two cancellations. But, yeah, so yeah, I was yeah. already just kind of like <laughs> the, over. Like, the niggas ain't these niggas ain't showing up. But and then Tyler the Creator was the headline of the first night, which I. I'm not a big. I'm never really listening to his music. Honestly, right. like I thought his, his performance was pretty dope. Like he definitely got good energy. He has good crowd work. So the first and the day people to that me, fuck with him, fuck with. Yeah, him. yeah. Right. no, there's definitely people that fuck with him. Heavy. The people that were there that fuck with his music, bro. Like they were. It was like they saw Drake. You know, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, I, like you said, I don't really fuck with Tyler the Creator's music too much. It almost tempted me to like get into a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Get into I, might, music I, might, a little actually, bit more. I might give it an honest try now. Right. It's kind of like that, like, dark kind Rap. of like. <laughs> yeah, that dark. Yeah. S- like, it reminds me of, like, uh, sarcastic rap a bit. Like, yeah. I don't know. But that was the first day I realized that, like, you know, my body is not built the same, clearly. <laughs> like, you know, even though, like, I'm a bigger guy, but I've always been able to, like, keep up with, like, my skinnier friends. That showed me that I am not there. Like, You got to get it together? I got to get it together, man. That. I had to take a, the next day. I had literally had to take a Tylenol before we even started our day, just to make sure that like my body felt up to par. So, what would you rate the first day? One out of ten. <coughs> um, to be honest with you, maybe like a four. A four? Yeah, I'll give it like a four. Damn. All right, I yeah. give it a five or six. Like, <laughs> right. Definitely, like you could have skipped the first day and you you wouldn't have really missed missed nothing. too much. Like, yeah. Yeah. First, the first day of Made in America this year was eh. I mean, I think it was just the two cancellations that really kind of fucked it up. And I think the lineup, the lineup wasn't that great. You know, I think the yeah, I mean, Tyler the Creator being the headliner just right. wasn't doing it for me. Yeah. 
Lowe's, you've heard did do his um his thing once I realized he was up on stage. <laughs> and you, you know said, what? Oh, you, got, you did get to see your boy Jaleel on the first day. So yeah, I did get to see Jaleel. Was the, like, the I was actually introduced to Jaleel on the first Yo, day. Yo, that's you your, know? like, your uh, highlight of the day? On the first day, yeah. You know what it was? It was that I was in so much pain already, you know? Like, my back was already killing me. Like, I, if for those that don't know, I got a, into a car accident, so, like, my back isn't the best. And, you know, a lot of walking, there's really no place to, like, sit down and take a break or anything like that, so... I realized that like I wasn't really enjoying the experience too much because of my own personal shit going on. But overall, like I said, the day, you know, the day was all right. The day was what it was. It was something to do. Would I do it again? Absolutely. Instead yeah. of like, you know, being, right. so, being or whatever. All right. First day for you is a four. Mm-hmm. First day for me is a five. All right. Let's get to yeah. the second day. Second day, that shit was, I don't know, bro. I, I, gotta got to give, see it, my, I give it a nine. I was about to say a nine. Like, I give it a nine. I got, I got to see my nigga Burner. Yo, Burner Boy is definitely like one of the people I've always wanted to see. Bad Bunny was never somebody that I would like. I would have never gone to see Bad Bunny by himself. Right. But I am so glad I got to see, to see Bad him. Bunny. Yeah. Like, yo, I feel like we saw two legends. Yeah. That night, like. Yeah, absolutely. Like back to back. Bro, can like, we talk about like Bad Burn uh Bad Bunny's trajectory though? Like, he started off. Like I feel like a few years ago you didn't even know anything about Bad Buddy, and now this guy's yeah, but like maybe that's because we don't really listen superstar. to reggaeton. True, Very like he could have been really big already with yeah, reggaeton yeah. artists, and then like he just made it mainstream. So now we're aware of him, right? Yo, but that could be the same thing about Burnham Boy, right? Because like yo, Burnham Boy might be kind of like have still nah to me. I don't know, Burnham Boy to me is just like a a, a fucking global thing, <laughs> right? The great but thing like, is like you know, I was you know watching... what I'm saying? Like sometimes, yo, you could have like your niche audience, and then you think like, and to them, you're like the biggest <coughs> thing in the world. And, yeah. Like, to other people, like, oh, who the fuck is that? <laughs> you know, I was watching a, a couple of videos on Burner Boy a while back, and like I saw that he's been making music for a while now. Like, Long time. yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like started off. I think it was like regular rap, and then went to like reggae, Af- and Afro then beats. went to like Afro beats after, and then went to like. Afro fusion music where, where he's at right now, you know, okay. which, you know, I didn't really think he was out for that long, but he's been out for like some years. You know? I first listened to the Burnham Boy in 2017. Really? Yeah. What was the first song? Do you remember? Uh, I don't. I just remember I was like, I found him by accident because I was listening to just like the UK artists. Yeah. And then like, you know, once you start listening to certain people on Spotify, like they just keep recommending you. Shit. Right, right, right. No, nah, nah, I'm lying. I'm lying. You know who I listened to first? No. Cool. That kind of got, I think that's when I was really big into DeVito. Oh, yep, 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 yep. And like Wizkid. Yeah, and like, yeah, yeah. And then Burner Boy came up. That's what it was. I think that's around the time that uh, DeVito had came up with Fall. Kind of, I think it was a couple years, a two, couple, maybe right around there or the year before. But yeah, okay. that's, when I, that's when I got really big into Afrobeats. Right. And that's when I just started listening to like every like artist out of like the, like African artists, like out of um, like the UK or Africa. And that's when I. You know so I've been I, a big fan of him for a long time, so that's why I was so happy to see him. Right, and he you know, he did a really long set, mm-hmm. like and injured at that. Like his leg was fucking injured. Was that, it? Yeah, he said it multiple times. Like, bro, I'm so fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I could, he, was, he was hopping around and shit, and was like, um, I was occupied. You know, I couldn't really, I couldn't really, um, I can't really do too much right now because I injured my leg, and the only reason why I'm here is because I love y'all. But like, he was really oh, like he did say it when he opened up. Yeah, he was really like limping like everywhere he went and that shows some fucking dedication you know he could have easily canceled yeah. and it would have set the trend i think if he had canceled would have definitely asked for a refund on my money like oh no nah, if he like if you if burner boy didn't make that show that would have been i probably might have never gone back to me <laughs> really like, that would yeah. that kind of might have killed it for me yeah well i think like you know he still went up there he still gave a performance i would have loved obviously loved to see him at like optimal yeah. optimal health but Bro, you I'm know. Just thinking, if that's not him optimal like i can't even imagine him on 100 yeah. percent. like because that show yo, he did a a great set like yeah, it was yeah, a, yeah. probably almost an hour and a half i would say yeah he did he killed it bro and like but if you notice that like, he wasn't really moving too much he wasn't doing like his typical like falling and i was just and i was like i think i was just like, <laughs> vibe and you know what i'm saying like i was in my yeah, zone 100 yeah, yeah, you know like and that's what it was it's, you know what i realized like how big he was it was that there were parts of the song where like the song was so big that people didn't even know that they didn't speak african because like he stopped Singing. Oh, that's me. That's me. <laughs> he had stopped singing and like wanted pointed the mic to the crowd and waited for the crowd to respond back. But everybody was so engulfed in him that like nobody realized that nobody's singing at this point. And uh-huh. I think he he didn't pick up on it and you know jump right back into it. But uh-huh. I feel like you know his music definitely does something to you to the point where like 
you know, you're you don't know what the fuck he's saying, but you're just yo. That's the same thing to me with Bad Bunny, bro. Like, yeah. I don't know what he's saying, but like it, like the music speaks to me. You know, it, it, I wouldn't be Bad Bunny. I feel like Aventura does that to me, or Prince Royce. Okay, for Spanish people, Spanish okay, music. Okay, I fuck with them heavy. You know, and to me, what was a nice surprise um, on the second day was I. I thought Snow Allegra was actually pretty good. Like it kind of changed. It, it slowed down the vibe. And it was like it was nice, yo. But like I, I, I thought it was actually gonna be weird to have like an R and B singer, right? There, but like yo, it actually it fit the vibe, yo. Like it kind of slowed it down, gave you, you know, gave you a chance to like recuperate. I think, I think it was still a little bit different for a festival. Like nah, it was, wasn't. She looking good though. I mean, she, she was, was looking, looking good, but yeah, she was glowing up there. <laughs> it was the mu- type of music. Like it was just like kind of put you in your feels. Yo, but I think it was in the middle of I a think festival. Jazz, wasn't Jaz- Jasmine Sullivan was the day before too? So they did have um, an R&B singer the day before too. You know, Chad Sullivan was, I think they said that she yeah, was she there, was but a, I don't remember. We watched a little bit of her. We, we, we did? She was on the main stage. We watched a little bit of her. We didn't catch her whole thing. For her? Yeah. I don't know if I was there. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. And then, I thought Don Tolliver was a, a nice surprise. Yo, I've kind of like always kind of knew about him. Right. But the dude got hits, yo. You know the crazy Don thing Tolliver is? I was like, is a sleeper, bro. So you guys were like so hyped about Don Tolliver. We actually ran into some other people from, from the area out there. Yeah, shout out to the dudes. <laughs> yeah, my boy Rashim and uh, my boy Tone. We ended up seeing them out there. But, you know, they they were so hyped for like Don Tolliver. And I'm like, eh, like Don Tolliver, I heard of his name, but I don't really know his music. <laughs> but I think when we were getting dressed in the hotel room, like you were playing some songs, I was like, damn. Oh. He got, he got like I know his songs, but like I don't even I don't know the name and like that. You, you didn't know, know it was him. Like, yeah. but I'm like yo, boy got bangers. <laughs> he definitely doing like I know his songs. Like not even like oh I could recognize it. Like I know the words to some of his songs, yeah. you know. And I think it was definitely dope. You know, he definitely he did an amazing performance too. Like he killed it. Like he was the fucking headliner. Yeah. So yeah, the day two of Out of Married America. Like you, that was a day you did not want to miss. Like that was one of the best festival days of the year. I would say. Yeah, I think it was it was really good. You know, it was really good. Like I said, I'll go I'll 100% go back again. I think if you just experienced the first day, you probably be like, eh, this isn't this isn't worth it, but like right. the, the second day." I mean, that's how I felt. That's exactly how I felt. I was like I'm the type of person I like vibes. So like yeah. even if it's like, you know, I'm not there to critique the performances or, you know, <laughs> see who's who the actual people that are that are up there. I'm really just there to enjoy a good time. So I enjoyed it because it was a good time, but like I was definitely thinking like this is it's all right. It's not the greatest thing, yeah. but Burner Boy Burner Boy definitely made it. Yo, up. and can we give the biggest shout out to the Virgin Island dudes, bro? <laughs> that Yo, them those they, guys. That was one of the best day parties I've been in a minute, and that yeah, wasn't yeah. even supposed to be, be a, a day, day party. party like, yeah. So if you're in Made in America, you already know like they had like the um they're like, doing like some like free flight promotion like, right, like right, Vir- right. to the Virgin Islands like these carnival dudes yo and the crazy thing is the only reason why we stopped was because they were giving away rags and we were yeah, yeah, we, we were need- both we were both sweating we we're like yo we need some fucking rags so like we ended up stopping and the energy that these the guys vibes. gave now, the sec- first day was straight it was, yeah. it, was a, it was a decent vibe but the second day they yo I think they had to like stop because <laughs> nobody actually was watching, <laughs> we the, watching performance. the performance like, everybody yeah, was yeah. on that like just like they and literally like they were performing the carnival. Yeah, the it guy felt like carnival. Like <laughs> the guy was on top of a table, fucking killing it, and he was just DJ. Like he yeah. was just not even really like he was just up there doing what most DJ should be doing. You know, just up there yeah. entertaining the crowd, engaging with them. He stopped the songs like a thousand and ten times, but niggas was really still waiting for him to like play the next song yeah. to get right back yeah. into it. Yeah. 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 It's to the point where he memorized it, you know? It's a it was a dope vibe. It was a hundred nah, percent cool. Th- that guy needs cool to host experience. more events. Like yo, if he, yo, if he was just on stage mm-hmm. like when like Key Glock or Kodak canceled. Yo, niggas would have killed like niggas would have bro. That would have Niggas would have even Key Glock cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nobody would have been tight, bro. Yeah. Nobody would have been tight. Like yo, if you fuck with like the carnival vibes, yo, that was the, that was a place to be. And he was like the he was like definitely the good pregame to the actual you know performers because I think we saw him pretty early on when we got there too yeah and like you know things started to pick up over there pretty early quick pretty quickly as soon as we got there but he was like I, like you said he's like prepared you for carnival you know he was like ready to jump right into that that scene all right so yo <coughs> now that you've experienced your first um music festival what is some advice you would give to someone that's never been to one? fucking getting health <laughs> getting get optimal health? health at least a month before like start walking on a track or something 
if you're not in good health and you're just like fuck it i'm gonna go there and i'm gonna do my thing definitely go with some tylenol or um you know something that could be considered like a pain reliever because be in shape the fucking pain that you're gonna be in when you're there is out of control like it it's it's too it, it's non-stop walking non-stop energy so that's that, that's my advice yo how should you dress yeah, as breathable as possible like, comfortable yo yeah. shorts sweats yo jeans are not a go yo right 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 yo be if you're going to a music festival be as comfortable as you Yo, put put on your most comfortable shoes. Not your yo. And speaking of sneakers, do not put yeah. on your fly sneakers. Yo, they Absolutely will not. get messed up out there. Cooked, like, cooked, yeah, cooked, bro. Like you want to wear the bummiest sneakers that you could get. Something that's actually not even the bummiest, the most comfortable sneakers. You better go to fucking Payless, get you some Skechers, and like rack up on them shits because and the girls, the girls dress crazy too. Like bathing suits and everything. Like it was fucking carnival. Like yeah, that's what it reminded me of. It reminded me of like. Um, a carnival like in one spot that's what it was yeah um all right so i, I do got a question for you okay because um i've been seeing this with chris brown and even baba did it right okay yo is there any artist that you would have paid to see like to do a meet and greet with out there like out of any artist that we saw uh, burner boy huh burner boy 100 how much would you pay for um for, like the chill burner boy that's crazy because i'm cheap i'll probably pay like a cool hundred dollars max how much hundred dollars max you pay a hundred dollars to go see burner boy like in person like, like, like just take a picture yo what up burner what up my nigga that's it yeah so yo like you seen that thing with like um chris brown's like charging like his fans to do a thousand dollars like for meet and greet and take pictures of him no i didn't know that you see it i seen the meet and greets but i didn't know that yeah so he's doing like a thousand bucks <coughs> and you could take a picture of him yo how would you feel like if your girl did that shit like she paid a thousand bucks to go like do a meet and greet with him I'm cool with that. You I'm be cool with give, that shit? I don't give a fuck. All you're doing is hugging him and like taking a pic with the nigga. Like if you're back there fucking jerking him off, it's like a thousand dollars? You you paid this nigga a thousand dollars to jerk him off? Like, it's crazy. Bro, I could see women doing that shit. You crazy? I ain't gonna lie to you, that is that is for that's, that's a that's a high <laughs> that probability, is yo. Like, what are you talking about? Just pay Chris Brown to fuck this nigga or to jerk him off. Like, yeah, I could see that. I could see that shit. Bro, you if a woman knew that she was gonna get dicked down by Chris Brown, he could probably charge more. Like, if it was guaranteed dick for guaranteed them. Guaranteed dick, yeah. If you have a dick special, yeah. <laughs> you'll probably be able to, uh, you know, get a little bit more out of him. What do you think? How much you, or who would you, who would you have paid for? Yeah, I don't, I'm gonna be real with you, bro. I don't think there's any artist that, like, I would, like, pay for a meet and greet over 25 bucks. 25? I just, yo, like, I, I, f- I fuck with the content. I fuck with people's music. Like, there's like, I got my favorite artists, but like, to pay them to meet them. <coughs> is that a pride thing? <laughs> or like. It's just not. No, nah, that's <coughs> not a pride thing. Like, it's not even worth it to me. Like, it's just like, I, I, I have everything that I need from you. And that's your music. Like, right. I don't, I don't need anything else. You know what I mean? I I might do, I might do a hundred. Michael Jackson was still alive. I'll do, I'll do a cool 200 for, for Drake. From MJ? For Drake. For Drake, yeah. do a two I do cool two hundred for Drake. A cool two hundred for Drake. Like life will be complete at that point. <laughs> life like, will be complete if you like, met Drake. Life will be bro. complete, bro. Life will be complete. Like I feel like if I get to meet Drake, it's like it's like now I know you, nigga. Like now I know the nigga behind the music. Yo, respectfully. Fuck it. What are you about to say? Like fuck it. You're, you know what? You know it's <laughs> fuck it. That's man. some dick. That's some dick writing shit. <laughs> fuck it. All right, it. Yeah. You just, if I met Drake, life would be, yeah, life yo, would kill be complete, me now, dude. yo, kill me now, take, yo, life, take me now, life I met Drake. Life will be Drake. complete, like, you know, one thing is, like, I don't know, I feel like, you know, meeting a president is cool and all, like, but it's like, some, president. ain't somebody, yeah, exactly, like, that's not somebody I look up to, but like, not, not even say I look up to Drake, but like, you know, I just fuck with the nigga, like, I fuck with his music, I think, and the nigga make nothing but hits, so, if there was an artist I would pay for, it would be 200 bucks, I'll pay $200 for it, to see this nigga, I'll be really upset. If Drake came locally and like if I had a girlfriend and she didn't pay for me to like go go see this thing. Oh, like if your girl didn't pay for yeah, you she didn't and she didn't get me like a trip to go see this thing. You know? I'll be tight. I mean do you, do you want to jerk him off for a thousand bucks? Like Come on, you can't ask me that on camera, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, honestly nah. Like 
It's not not even to that. I just you know I just fuck with him, man. That's really. It. I mean, I fuck, I'm a big Drake fan too. I just yeah. don't. I don't know. I mean, cause yo, if my girl paid a thousand bucks to go meet a celebrity, I'd be pissed. Yo, it's like I would just, I'd be pissed, and I and it's like, all right, I might let you do it, but I swear, you better never ask me for money ever in your life. Like, yo, actually, cause yo, cause it's like, yo, would your girl just give you a thousand bucks to meet you? To meet me? I'm just saying, for a regular nigga. Not to, to your girl, you bet you you an all star. Your like, think about it, when you got a girl, that, you should be you should be the Drake to your girl, bro. We know that's a fucking lie. Like we I know, know. So I'm saying, but like that's a yo, cause like damn, like you that's how much you think of this man. Like, <coughs> like we don't even got yeah. Yo, <laughs> like, most people don't even have a thousand dollars saved up, and your girls out here paying a thousand dollars to meet. Drake, but, I, but I understand it, Chris Brown. I understand it. Like you know, I get the fact. Like I don't get it. My 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 now ex, <laughs> she fucked with Coldplay really heavy and. I bought her tickets to go see Coldplay. We both took like a birthday trip to go see Coldplay. Okay. Like I would have paid some decent money to like get her to go do a meet and greet with them if it was possible, you know. Unfortunately, they didn't have anything like that. Yeah, how much would you pay for a Coldplay? I don't know. You know the thing is because it's for her, I think I would pay more. Oh, more but not not because of like because it's I'm giving it as a gift. So you know, okay. anytime you listen to them, it's gonna be like. I met Coldplay, and I met Coldplay because of this nigga. So, like, I want to make... Okay. Like, make an impression for life. Yeah, it's like, you know, something that is... Coldplay is rarely ever, like, locally. And then, like, you know, the all the chance of, like, you seeing Coldplay again is very slim. So, like, you know, I would definitely want to make sure that I make that experience for you, you know? Like like I said, it's more... I'm more inclined. So, maybe... I would pay $500 a pop. A pop for both of you? Yeah. Dude, damn. I would pay 500 a pop. You, you a fan, you know? I respect that shit. I mean, I fuck with Coldplay, but I don't fuck with Coldplay like that. I would have paid five hundred dollars a pop for myself, but like if like she wanted to go, I would have paid five hundred dollars a pop. Let me ask you this, yo. All right, say you say you so you understand your girl paying a thousand bucks to go see Chris Brown. Yeah. Yo, what would you do if like you so she pays a thousand bucks? Yeah. She comes back like yo, like I did, I did, like the dude kissed me, like we kissed on the lips. You got some bread out of this thing? No. That's crazy. Like you breaking up with her? I mean, you understand it. it's a celebrity. Like you already understand that she paid the money for. Her. I'll say this: I don't know if I'll break up with her, but I'll be less mad if, as if she, it, I'll be less mad compared to if she had kissed like a regular nigga. Like, so you could take it. You take it. You won't break up with her. I remind her of it constantly if we stay together. I probably I, I won't even break up with her. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I wouldn't. Anytime, break up with yo, anytime his music come on, like, yo, they're going man. I say, oh, you kissing it? So this is niggas we kissing now, right? Like, so really, so yo, you'd break up with your girl if she kissed a regular, dude, a regular nigga, yeah. But you wouldn't break up with her if she kissed her favorite celebrity. Yeah, I wanna be, I wanna be as man. You don't think that's crazy? Nah, not at all. Like, nigga, like, bitches fucking suck bum ass niggas dicks on a regular. Like, I would rather my girl actually kiss somebody that like. She fucking idolizes some nigga with bread and like some random nigga, like, and the likelihood of you fucking this nigga is very slim. So like, no, it's kiss, not. Kiss, it's not. kiss is like oh, is one thing, but like you not fucking. Bro, you gotta think about this. Isn't this is just a regular dude? This is still a man. What man needs, like, yeah, but them niggas like the niggas fucking charging a thousand dollars for a meeting greet. So obviously he sees himself as like higher than the regular person. So like he's not gonna be fucking random fans like that. He might fuck a random stripper. But he ain't gonna fuck a random fan, you know. Like I don't really foresee that happening. Like he'll get a bum bitch from like um, King of Diamonds pregnant, but he's not gonna fuck like a a fan and get a fan pregnant. I just don't foresee that. He might just bust in her face. I mean, maybe. But like I said, I mean, I let her fuck this nigga too. Like as long as she got some bread, like she got to come back. With yeah, something. how much? How much money would she have to get for you to be like, all right, this this is cool? I'm not gonna hold you a regular nigga. Some some bread, but like Chris Brown, I don't know. Twenty k. If your girl, if your girl fuck Chris Brown, cheated on you, with Chris, if your girl cheated on you with Chris Brown, but she got twenty k out of it and she gives you fifteen. Fifteen? That's crazy, nigga. She gives you fifteen out of twenty k. She got a pocket for some. <laughs> I wouldn't even expect twenty k, fifteen k. Oh, Honestly, you think that's too good? Yeah, I think that's out of sight of control. But she oh, I thought you want the whole twenty. You're a reasonable yeah. man, yo. I ain't gonna hold you. I would let her fuck Chris Brown for ten, and I love her the same. Like, I love her the same. Really? She coming back with the shit? 
I think twenty k is like far fetched. Like Chris Brown's not paying twenty five k to fuck a fan. Like I just don't see it happening. Ten k maybe. I feel like that's like pocket okay. change for this nigga. All right. I mean, if you girl wanted to fuck Chris Brown, like, is there a number? Like, what's your what's your what's your number? Yo, for you to matter. stay with her? No, no, don't, there's no number, yo. Like, really? I would I would tell her there's a number, and I'd break up with her as soon as I got the money. Why would you break up with her? Just just another. Just another munch. <laughs> just another munch out here. Like, oh, you thought I was feeling you? <laughs> like, nah, that's crazy. Like. Nah, bro, I couldn't. I couldn't deal with that, yo. I could not deal with my girl laying down with anybody. Like, bro, if, like I knew it. Like dude. I knew it. Bro, I'll take it. Like, bro, cheating is so fucking like. It's become too normal, yo. Nah, I feel like we, not like purposeless cheating is fucking crazy. So prostitution like, is fine. That's what you're talking that's about. That's what you call prostitution. Yeah, that is, no, that's not what I call prostitution. it. That's the, de- that's the definition of it. <laughs> nah, prostitution or opportunity is really how you want to look at it. You know, I feel like if she's going to fuck this nigga for some bread, like, why not? You know, like, why not we both win out of the shit? Like, you're really going to hold, like, I let your pride stop you for, like, fucking 20K? Like, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, 100%. Nah. My pride ends with my girl. I, bro, I would love her the same. Like, bro, my pride ends with my girl getting fucked by someone else. Like, that's bro, I would love her more if she come back with twenty k versus like if she kissed this nigga. Like, I mean, bro, twenty k isn't even like life changing. It's not life changing, but at least you got something out of it. You know, like I could see you making you made sense of the shit versus like doing the shit for free. Like, if you threw it back on this nigga for free, that's crazy. Like, that is a but wild. You still said you'd, you'd be a forgiver. I said for a kiss. Oh, <laughs> for, right, so you kiss him for, for a free. kiss. You like, kiss him for free. I understand. I'll be. I, I, like I said, understand. I understand, but I'll remind her of it consistently. Okay, but if she fucks him for free, that's, that's a break, crazy. Break up. That's crazy. Okay. All right. That's crazy. Like you giving somebody else to go. You know what? Well, pussy. Pride, um, this little technique is catching flack for his Bawa. Bawa yeah. did a thing too where he's going like on a concert and he's charging a thousand dollars for a meet and greet. Ain't like, nobody showing up. That's. That's what we were saying. Like, like, come on, Bob. Like, you got, you got too much. Um, you got too much swag in your circle. I'm gonna like, get to charge a cool fifty bucks. Take what he can. I get. think. I think Bow Wow's range of fame right now is a good one fifty, one hundred, one fifty. I think no. There's. A, I think there's still some like. I think there's just some like old head chicks that would pay him for that. And Bow Wow definitely fucking. He's, oh yeah, hundred percent. He's he's nigga smacking. Now if my nigga if my girl fuck Bow Wow for twenty k, that's crazy. Like that's <laughs> that's so wild. Stuff. Like she caught the lame. Yeah, like nigga, bitch, you could have done better than that. Like, you could have got Chris Brown shit. Like you fuck with you fuck with Bow Wow, at least thirty k, thirty five k for okay. Bow Wow. Yeah, you know, I do think it's funny though. I've seen some, <coughs> I've seen some of the pictures for like the Chris Brown meet and greet, uh-huh. and some of the pictures were with dudes. And I was like, damn, y'all really out here like paying that much for like to see? Like yeah, I said, like I, I get it to an extent. Yeah. Yo, Chris Brown is definitely like a living legend. Like right. he, he's like the closest thing to Michael Jackson that we've had. I'm right. saying, yeah, I think uh, obviously not close, but like the closest thing. Right. No, I definitely think, you know, he's, um, I don't know, you know, I think it's a hard pill to swallow, like, I feel like pride is what stops guys from, like, you know, really getting to enjoy life, like, we spend money on fucking the dumbest things, but, like, you want to spend money to, like, see somebody that, like, you know, you really, you know, listen to their music, or you really fuck with heavy like that, like, you know, I really, not to say, like, I feel like, yes, you get out of it, yes, on the basic end of it, like, all you're really gonna get is a picture, you know, but, like, you don't know that because it could really be meaningful to, like, a person. So, like, like I wouldn't, I don't know, I'm not knocking it. Like, for to those niggas, more power than them. Am I paying $1,000 to see fucking Chris Brown? Absolutely not. But okay. I can understand a nigga that, like, listened to Chris Brown heavy. Like, that nigga probably was inspirational to them, like, growing up and shit. Like, I don't know. Like, Where? it is what it is. All right. Um, so, we, we talked about Made in America. So let's mm-hmm. talk about the city of Philadelphia, you know, Meek Mill's hometown. What did you think of Philly? Honestly, I don't think we really got to enjoy Philly as much. I think, you know, we went for Made in America. Made in America took a large portion of the day. Yeah, that's the thing about music festivals when you go somewhere. Like, (coughs) they're usually from 3 to 9, so, like, most of your day is eating up. Yeah. And then the next day, you're still recovering. So, by the time you wake up, it's, like, already time to wake up and go to the festival. And go back to the festival again. But, like, I think Philly, Philly's all right, you know? I think Philly's, like, Philly's, like, the perfect mesh between mm, no one step down but under chicago like i think it goes chicago toronto chicago new york and then philly for the trips that i've been on okay. so far. Nah, yo when i go to like big cities yo i, I actually kind of like the structure of buildings and how like everything looks mm-hmm. and like fits in 
I thought Philly was actually a pretty beautiful like city. You know what I'm saying? Like their streets are definitely kind of weird. Like they're mad tight. Bro, yeah. But like I, I thought, yeah, you, know, you know what? Like I thought there was a lot of art everywhere. Like whenever I go to a new city and I see a lot of art on on the buildings and the buildings look cool. Like that actually like makes me feel good. That's right. like I like to see that kind of stuff. And Philly definitely offered that. Um, one thing when you go to Philly is obviously you gotta try the cheesecake or the cheese steak. Cheesesteak, uh, yeah. Cheese steaks. What do you think? Um <coughs> let's talk about the cheesesteaks in Philly, man. Gino's or Pats. Yo, I can't even my believe nigga, my nigga Gino got it, right? <laughs> Yo, I can't believe when people talk about cheesesteaks in Philly, like Gino's is even brought up. That place is so trash i couldn't believe how bad it was like like it's just like the cheesesteak was horrible bro, i like, felt like krausers could have gave me a better cheesesteak nah bro that. like a bodega gives you better cheesesteaks <laughs> right. than fucking um um gino's like right. it's crazy that they even got the name my man pat got it yeah pat pat is pat yo is so it, if man. you go to philly and you like go there to try a cheesesteak and you see gino's right across the street is another place called pat's Skip Gino's, like, just go to Pat's. Like, Gino's cheesecakes was dry, no flavor. Like, Pat's had it. We had, we, we spun the block on Pat's. <laughs> we were going to try, I mean, we we're supposed to try, um... I think Max. Right? Max's. Max's, actually, I had a couple years ago. I, it was good. I don't yeah. really remember, but I just remember it was good. No, and it wasn't. Louis. It was Gooey Louie's. Gooey Louie's. Yeah. We went there on Labor Day, though, so it was closed. Right, so right. that's just, definitely next time we go there, we got to try, um, Gooey Louie's. Gooey Louie's. Honestly, would you go back? To Philly? Yeah. Yeah, Philly's definitely a city I, I, um, I, I spend the block on. What do you think the likelihood of you, like, going back is? Like, is it... I don't know. I feel Pretty like... Pretty high. Philly, I mean, I'll probably go to Made in America again next year. Really? Yeah. I mean, outside of Made in America, would you go to Philly? Yeah, I think so. Yo, if someone, like... I probably wouldn't plan a, a trip to Philly, but if someone's like, yo, I'm going to Philly this weekend. You want to come? I'm like, I'm there. Yeah. Like, it would... It wouldn't take much convincing. I'll tell you that. Like, like I said, I don't think we really got to experience Philly in its entirety. Like, you know, like... Most of the places we went to, we went to experience that city. Whereas, like, Philly, we went for a specific event, which just yeah. happens to be in that city. So, I think, I really think it could have been no different if, it, like, Made in America was in, like, fucking, I don't know, another city in Pennsylvania. Like, it would have been, like, the same outcome, you know? No, nah, I think the energy was a little, I, I feel like, I don't know, when you get enter, like, a big city, you kind of feel like the energy. And I definitely felt it, like, in Philly. You think it was specifically for Philly? Like, what if it was, like, in Tennessee or some shit? Like, you think, like... It would have like That's a state. Tennessee, fucking Nashville. My bad. No, I think so. You're I like, think yo, I think yo, these big cities got energy, bro. Like I feel like when you go there, like it just you feel it. Like you just when you walk in, you like touch in. Like you're like, all right, I'm somewhere. Right. Like I'm not in the middle of nowhere. I don't know. I feel like you know it would have draw people. I feel like. Do you feel like it would have had such a big hit if it was in Waterbury? What made in America? Yeah. Nah. No. Hell no. You don't think no that, that many people would have showed up? No way. Yo, you, yo, shit like that, you got to do it in a big city. Like, you got to do it. Yo, if you did it in Chicago, you'd get it. If you did it in New York, New York, you'd get it. Like, there's nowhere in Connecticut. Maybe Hartford, and not that big of a scale, but, like, nah. Like, yo, it just has it. Like, yo, it was it was a good vibe. Yeah, I, I think, like I said, I think we didn't really get to enjoy Philly as much. But I think, like, nonetheless, I think... Philly's a dope place, you know, from what we, from what we did. Yo, even like on that good. street where like Geno's and Pat's is, like just the vibe right there. Like we went to that bar across the street called Garage. Yeah. Like it was a dope vibe in there. Like, yo, that whole street, like you could play basketball across the street. You could <laughs> eat. You could yeah. like catch a drink right here. Like yeah, some, a couple it was a vibe. Yo, I, feel like it was, yo, I feel like it was one of those cities where you could literally just walk around at night and you're going to run into something. Yeah. I mean, but obviously we didn't because by the end of the festival, like we were just so burnt beat. out. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we did go out the last night. Um, was a new experience for me because I've actually never done that. Right. And I didn't even know what was going on <laughs> until you broke it down to me. Right. So on the last night of um, Made in America, we actually mustered up the energy to go out. Right. And <coughs> we ended up at a gay club. Yeah. Which uh, I'd which, never been to a gay club before. Well, un, unbeknownst to us. Like, we did not plan that. It was just a, we were looking out I mean, open. You did, you did pick it. I didn't question. So this Drake, that Drake thing might um start start making sense now. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we uh I was looking up clubs that were just open and it just happened to be that one. So when I walked in, I'm like, you know, it's a common theme here. Like, <laughs> seemed like the the oh. I didn't that's a, I didn't pick up on it, yo. Right. I didn't. So we, I know we walked downstairs. I was like, you know what? There's a couple yeah. zesty dudes next to me right now. <laughs> zesty. It's okay. Like nothing like alarming. Right. And then we went upstairs, right? And that's when it kind of like started kind of like dawning on me. Because I'm like, yo, 
there's a lot of dudes making out in here. Yeah. But the music's good. Like, the music they're playing hip hop yeah. upstairs. So I was like, I was vibing. I was like, yeah, yeah. Okay, he's making out. All right, he's making out. This one's complimenting me. Thank you. Like, <laughs> it's like, and then you're like, yo, I think you're like, yo, that was pretty good for a gay club. I'm like, for what? Yeah. Like, I think, I think the thing is, is that like, I don't know what, when I realized it, it was like, I noticed that all of the bartenders were, were gay. Like one guy had definitely had no underwear on fucking pants hanging off his ass. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? Oh, like, I don't think this is up to cold right now. Like, <laughs> I don't think my guy definitely. Not, this is the health department. Is not aware of this. <laughs> yeah, this definitely not. And then I looked at the other bartender, and we went upstairs, and I was like, you know, there's a common, there's a common trend here, and um, like I just, I, I quickly picked up on it. Like, I noticed, like you said, a bunch of guys kissing and stuff. So, but nonetheless, I feel like we had a good time. You know, no, I feel no, like no, the vibe no, no. was. Yo, gay, gay club. The gay club was lit, bro. My. Fr- Yo, I would definitely go back to a gay club. Like, would you go was, back to that gay club again? Yeah, that one, yeah. yeah. Yo, because, I mean, there was still, like, a good racial in there. Like, it wasn't all gay. I mean, damn. Now, it got me questioning. Were the women in there women? Hmm. I hope so. I'd go back just for the vibes. Like, it was no, no fights. Great. Um, friendly. Good music. Drinks was heavy. Yeah, I, I go back there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I hope I hope there were women. I just I don't know. What would you do? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I think I think it was fine. You know, that wasn't my first time at a gay club. I went out a couple times to a gay club, and it's always I don't know why. I feel like gay people know how to have fun. Like they actually they, in, do. they actually. You know what's funny? It's fun. it's crazy. We go to a gay club, <coughs> and um, the dude we were at that wasn't even with us. Yeah, <laughs> happen to be gay. <laughs> right, right, right. You yeah. had a blast in there. <laughs> it was it was definitely dope. You know, I think like I feel like gay clubs are what actual clubs are supposed to be like. You know, people are actually dancing and having yeah. fun and enjoying yeah. the music. They're not fucking you know actually shooting heard, up yeah. the club and shit. Like um, that. So I have a friend who kind of almost exclusively goes to gay clubs, but he's not gay. Yeah. But his logic is like, yo, most women go to gay clubs because they feel safer. That might be. And, a yo, thing. and he be. And he bags all the time. Really? He's a habitual bagger. <laughs> okay. Like, bro, if he was working at Stop and Shop at the, like, the fucking registry, he'd be bagging shit up. Like, Every hour? Yeah. Like, nonstop. Like, he bags. You know, I'm like, yo, I remember when he first started telling me, like, he was going to a gay club. I was kind of like, yo, is this like a soft launch to you? Like, you're gay? <laughs> right. He's like, then he's like, Spencer, you're not, bro. Like, you go to a gay club, you're going to meet more women there than you are at a straight club. And then, like, yo, he's just always sending us pictures, like, all the women he's with. And I was like, damn, like, this dude is racking up I'm yeah. like, yo yo <coughs> yo he's ahead of the game bro like he was like thinking of like he's he, was, he, was, he i was playing checkers this guy was playing fucking chess like you know bro, what I mean? like, think about it some of the baddest chicks are gay like the baddies be gay i remember a couple, few times i went to a gay club where they had some straight dimes in there like go, but everybody and like i said everybody's there to have fun like they're not sitting around on their phones recording each other or yeah, just yeah. throwing it back on their friends like they're really out mingling moving around doing things so you know i really think like i said gay clubs are what yo, regular just, clubs yo, and i be. wasn't like on my guard either you know what i mean sometimes yeah. when i go to a straight club it's just like i kind of feel like i have to be tough yeah you gotta it's puff like, your chest out a bit you know it's like i don't know who's like what the fuck is happening yeah. now? Like, I have, I'm, I'm unfortunate with the current situation that happened in Waterbury this week. That's, well, yeah, like week. even when we were out there, one of the clubs that in our city, there was like a like three people got shot inside a club. And it's just right. like, which is like for what? Doesn't make sense to me. You know, you can't even go out and have fun anymore at these points. You know, it's like I don't know. People just standing around to me mugging like fucking um fucking fucking be tough for whatever reason but i do have a question for you though yeah so me and you went out to the um went out to philly and i know you just came back for dr do you does your girl give you shit about like taking trips so often yes really yeah does it like is it about the fact that you're taking trips so often or is it the fact that she's not going with you um it could be a combination of both i think um I think when you're a couple, right, and one of the people in the couple goes on a vacation with their friends, there's always a sense of insecurity because, you know, you're like, oh, like, what are they going to do? Especially if your girl 
or a man is going out on a vacation with like single friends, right? Because right. You know, when single people go on vacation, like, they kind of have an more agenda. of a mission. You know right. what I mean? Like, they're like, yo, I'm I'm around. Yeah. So, you know, prior to you, you know, being single, I mean, you were in a relationship for a long time. So, I don't yeah. think there was that much, like, of a issue with me going out with you. But now that you're single, right, I could kind of see her, like, having more of an issue. But, yeah, she does give me shit sometimes. She gives me attitude. But to be honest with you... Even though I'm in a relationship, like, I still got to live my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, I cannot be fully dependent on my girl to be, to have fun, right? Like, yes, like, me me and her do our own vacations. You know, we do family vacations. But, like, yeah, I'm going to still have, you know, trips with my boys because, like, yo, like, being in a relationship is not, like, the entirety of my personality. Like, there's right. multiple parts. You know what I'm saying? And I can understand her insecurities, like, with me going out with, like, to vacation with single dudes. But, like, that's when her trust comes in because... I'll be honest with you. I mean, she goes on trips with her friends all the time, and I never give her shit like out loud. But right. A part of me is just like, "Yo, you going out with that one friend? Like, who's kind of a hoe?" <laughs> right. Like, I think there's, there's some worries. I'm saying, like, and it's like, "Yo, you know, you know what they say? Like, you know, birds of a feather, feather flock, flock together." together yeah. Right. Because, like, yo, well, my girl goes out with one, one of her single friends who I know is like actively out here looking for men. Right. Like, it's like most dudes don't go out by themselves. Right. Mm-hmm. So if her friend is talking to a dude there's have a group of dudes right but i'm saying there's a very likely chance that like that dude that her single friends talking to is going to have a friend right yeah. and his job i understand i understand how it works right his job is to entertain the friend the I, friend yeah. right which happens to be my girl right and like has that happened that i know of no like I, i've never like she's never confirmed that right but in reality has my girl gone out you know and talked to other men while like one of her friends is talking to somebody else. Yes, I think I think so. Like I think I'd be very naive of me to think like that. My girl. That's not like, happening. That, yeah. I mean, I think you... dudes that I think that dudes that say that to you, like to themselves are just lying to themselves because it, it makes you feel better. Now, what about when women say that like, we don't go out for guys, we go out to have fun? Like, you don't think that could be the case? I think sometimes. I mean, sometimes like we like we don't. I wouldn't say we go out for us, but like we. Right. we Yo, so, yo, most of the time I think we're just chilling, like we're vibing, listening to music. We're like, you know what I'm saying? We're not like out there for women. You right. know what I mean? Like, yo, if the vibe is good, the vibe is good. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just how we are. So just how men can go out without like the purpose of like, you know, searching for women. I, I do believe that women can go out with the same thing. Right. But the thing is, it's a little different. Right. Because. When we go out, right, it's really up to us to approach women. Right. Yeah. So like. I mean, it's very, it's kind of rare for like women to approach men. Yeah. But the difference is like when she goes out, right? Like she's a target in yeah. a sense, right? So is she getting approached by men? Yes. Like now, what, what is she doing when she gets approached? I don't know. Right. right. You know I mean, I mean? It, it, you know, I'm not gonna lie to you. It is a kind of a taboo, taboo thing you guys got. You know, where like you, you go out on like solo trips with each or without each other. Not even group friend trips i know you went on like a solo trip by yourself at one point in time to just kind of like you know take some space which i commend you know like i definitely commend you for for doing that i think you know each person needs to do that you know even when i thought about it i was like what the fuck why you why you going by yourself (laughs) but like you know i thought about when you explained it it made perfect sense but like i think in today's not even to today's and it is like just traditionally you know couples go out together or um you know they go out with their friends but Whereas, like, I know you travel quite a bit and you typically go out. I definitely know that it could be, you know, that you could definitely feel some pushback about that, you know, so. Which I got, like I said, bro, like, there are certain things in my life that I, I can, you know, bend on for my girl. But there's certain things that, like, yo, that's just. What it's going to be. What it's, it's going to be. And if right. it's, like, that big of an issue, then, like, I think that's a deeper talk we got to have. You know what I'm saying? Because I've never been the guy to tell my girl, like, she can't go nowhere or she can't wear this. You know what I'm saying? I just expect her to know better and to know how to behave when she gets there. You know what right. If it, if that's not the case, then like it's gonna come back to me. Like I'm gonna, one way or another, I'm gonna like know what's really going on, right? I mean, so I just take it like that. That's Andrew Tate's ideology. He's like, well, like pretty much women shouldn't really be going out on like fucking, like trips and shit. Which I don't know. I don't quite think I agree with that. But like I understand the logic behind it. You know, like I mean, in an ideal world, yo, bro, your girl wouldn't do shit, right, without your permission or without like you there, right? That's just like in your ideal world. Like if yeah, if I can have things like that, yeah, of course I would. (laughs) But yo, 
Yo, women aren't objects. They're not right. pets. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, we got to stop thinking about that shit. Like, they have their own free will. Absolutely. They're going to want to do their own f- things with their friends. And, like, yo, you got to respect that just how they respect you doing your things, right? And then you just got to have I mean, but do, trust. But the thing is, is that I feel the line that gets blurred is that respect doesn't mean that you're not going to have, you know, your own insecurities or your own thoughts behind it. And that could be, not, that does not mean just because you have your own insecurities that it's because of, what you got going on. I feel like this is this notion that we try to tell the other person to kind of deflect. Well, like they really think like, like, like you project, know, like you're projecting. Right. Yeah. You're really just like, you know, trying to deflect from what's really happening. I feel like it's our responsibility as like, especially when you're in a relationship to kind of ensure that your partner is secure and especially in moments where they feel insecure about a certain thing. And it may be something small, you know, but you kind of deflecting or you not, you know, reassuring them during a moment insecurity could cause their insecurity to grow. And like, yeah, for sure. You know, and unfortunately, that's what happened to me. You know, like, you know, coming speaking from experience is exactly what happened. But I mean, you know, that's definitely a thing um, in relationships. Like, yo, and I've had, I, there's been times where I haven't been the best at, like, you know, giving my girl reassurance because like sometimes you can just be stubborn or right. just like you're just so focused you're fo- on your own issue. or you're just so tired of it you know like yeah. you're tired of like being in that that space all the time it's like yo the best thing to do when insecurity comes up from like you know the person you're with is just give them reassurance like yo even if it's something that like you have reassured them a thousand times right, right. right. do it a thousand more times because like yo if that's how they feel that's how they feel right and it's like and you just like if you're a good partner that you know is good with communication like that's all you gotta do sometimes that's all you gotta say to somebody like yo you got nothing to worry about like i'm not doing anything behind your back like you can trust me and then it goes away it might come back a month or two later but like but that's then you gotta do it again that's just (laughs) what it is yo like that's the yo and that's the ebbs and flows of relationships man like it's not always like you're not always gonna be secure right like something might just trigger you right right there and then right and then you gotta you got to kind of handle it in that moment. I think, you know, we're kind of veering off topic, but I think where where the issue lies is that people don't really take the time out to address the issues or review one person's issues as being more important than the other. You know, I feel like we need to really take the time out to enjoy, or not to enjoy, but to enjoy the moment, but also enjoy the fact that, like, this is an opportunity for me to really, you know, make myself, seem solid you know like yeah. i think we tend to look at it and from a place of like i'm tired of proving myself i'm tired of talking about the same thing again and not really enjoying the fact that like the person is coming to you and actually expressing that to you you know they're not it takes a lot it takes a lot to like express your feelings you know, especially like yeah, as a man like if you're going up to your girl and telling me yo this is what i feel insecure about like that takes a lot because you're putting your pride aside because like you're letting her know like yo this makes me feel in what type of way right like this makes me feel like less of a man yeah like this makes me worry about other men. Yeah, absolutely. Which like most men do not want to admit. We, we, when, yo, when most men, yo, when most men are insecure, <laughs> we just get mad. Yeah. Like we just do angry shit, right? Like, <laughs> start just, slamming doors. Yeah, yeah, like you just start acting out. That's yeah. what most men yeah, do when they're insecure. Yeah, instead of just telling them, like, "Yo, I feel insecure. Like this is why." Right. Like, can you can I can I get some reassurance, please? I mean, but that could bring us into like a whole different subject because I feel like you know that's there's a reason why men aren't able to express themselves the way that they are. But going back to the, like, you know, the the topic, I feel like, you know, in the moment, like we, we went down there, we had fun. We did, we both were on our best behavior. We didn't really do anything when we were out there. And, you know, like if during that time that, like, you know, if your girl had a question or had an insecurity about something, you didn't reassure in that moment, like that now creates doubt for every, almost every other yeah. trip that you have coming up, you know? Yo, for no reason too. It's like you you could you could stop it that like you could stifle it for that moment you could kind of yeah, suppress yeah. it in that moment but a lot of times we just allow it to like feed further than like it really needs to go you know. Yeah. You know? All right, man. I think uh, that's all I got for today. <laughs> yeah, I think we definitely uh, veered off track a bit, but nonetheless, uh, Made in America was a great time. Um, definitely uh, recommend. Yeah. Highly recommend. I think you know, it. it's a good first step into the music festival. World. I think um, well, like I'm going to Roll Loud tomorrow. And that's that's for the big boys. <laughs> that's, right. Rolling Loud is Made in America plus some. So I think Made in America is definitely your like a first introduction 
right. into the music festival world. Like I think, yo, one thing that I think everyone should experience is a music festival. I think they're so dope, yo. They're so fun, especially if you do it with some friends. Like it's just, it's such a good time, yo. And you get to see so many artists that you probably would never see, right? Because like, yo, I was telling you, like, yo. We just saw Bad Money and Burning Boy, right? Like just that, just two out of like the twenty we watched, right? And we only paid what two hundred bucks? Yeah, just about two hundred dollars. Yo, Bad Bunny and Burning Boy by themselves would probably be two hundred bucks. Right? But we nah, just got, they're like I'm fucking just, three, four hundred dollars. I'm just saying cheap tickets, right? Yeah. But yo, we just got to see both like two legends, back right? Back, for yeah. two hundred bucks in the same night, like that's what I'm saying. Music festivals are the wave, man. Like yeah. individual concerts, I mean, they're cool and all, but like music festivals are where it's at for me. I think it's time for us to level up, man. We gotta do like Coachella and uh, Burning Man. Yo, say less. Yeah, we gotta make. We gotta, we gotta Coachella's make next. <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool. Let's do it. So, um, definitely recommend. I think it's a um, eight out of eight out of ten for me. Eight out of ten overall. I think the first day kind of brought the sport down a little bit, but the second day was per- perfect. Maybe it was six or seven. Perfect. Okay. Even with both days combined. Oh uh, yeah, both days combined. I'll give it a overall six or seven. Okay. That's fair. Um, so y'all heard it here. Y'all definitely um, make sure to check out these events that come near y'all. Drop some comments, yo, especially if you're there. Let us know um, what performers you really liked or disliked. What your thoughts on the old Man in America was? Like, give us your rating. As always, um, please like, subscribe. I was saying, let's get us to a thousand uh, subscribers. We're almost there. I think we're like touching 900. Yeah. Let's get to that 1K. All right. All right, keep tuning in. Thank you.